No, I don't waste no time What's going on guys and welcome back to a new video. Um, it is currently Friday at the time of recording this. I'm just wrapping up this week. Um, had a good week so far. We've signed two clients this week. Uh, one is a info product client. Um, or basically he is a consultant that wants to bring out his own info product. Uh, so that's client number one. And then we've also got a client that has a chain of restaurants, which is very interesting. Um, especially because like we focus on e-commerce. Uh, but this is quite a good little opportunity for us. So uh, happy to bring them on as well. But um, like I said, wrapping up this week and I wanted to record this quick video. It will be Monday, probably at the time of uh, publishing this. I've already got a video for uh, for today, for Friday. But uh, what I basically wanted to talk about is the future of SMMA. And it is a topic that I've wanted to discuss for a while. But there are a lot of things that, in my opinion, are included in the... the included basically in the question, you know, in, in things that you basically can't ignore when discussing the future of SMMA. Um, that for a while, to be fair, I still do think that I am probably not the right person to uh, discuss this. You know, there are um, bigger influences um, within this industry that are probably more qualified to give their opinion on this or basically you know, mention this or discuss this further. But I thought, you know what, let's just, it's, it's actually part of the, like the content team. I, I put this as one of the topics um, for July. So I thought, you know what, let's just be transparent and let's just, like literally just give my opinion on the future of SMA and uh, basically where we are heading um, in terms of like the market, etc., and in the industry. And um, like I said, this is all just my opinion. Uh, don't take all this as facts or anything like that. And also leave a comment down below what you think and what your thoughts are um, You know, on this whole topic and whole subject. You don't need to agree with me, you, don't, you know, or um, you don't need to personally disagree with me, obviously. But I'd just love to know your opinion. And uh, let's just start a little discussion in the comments and because I'm uh, quite curious to see how you guys um, find all of this. Why? Because I'm sort of in it. So maybe I will view things um, in a different way than you guys um, that are sort of like not necessarily on the sidelines, but maybe maybe I'm in too deep maybe to, to give like a, a proper objective opinion on all of this. But still, you know, I'm going to try my best to explain what I think and what my thoughts are. So in terms of the future, I think we do need to sort of narrow it down. Like what do we consider the future? Is the future next year? Is the future 10 years, five years, you know, whatever? um let's just take five or actually let's take 10 10 years from now so 2030 what will SMA look like will it still exist etc and i think when we look at social media marketing it is marketing at its core you know you are basically helping businesses grow by leveraging aspects of marketing um, and in this case it is digital why because we are moving towards you know a digital world you know everyone's using the internet uh, everyone is online nowadays more and more businesses are moving towards the online business model whereas you know back in the day we had billboards we had um, radio broadcasts then we had television advertisements etc um, we are now basically moving towards the digital world where everything is on the internet and the great thing about all of this is that you can track everything so if you published a billboard like 20 years ago you put up this billboard you know alongside the motorway or highway and you would spend x amount of money on it to, to get it up you know to basically um, get people to roll the the billboard like the poster on the billboard etc uh, for the rights to have your poster or your advertisement there for x amount of time etc so you'd spend x amount of money and from that point onwards you basically just wait because you, you there's no real way of tracking okay how many cars drove past how many people actually viewed it how many people that were in those cars actually observed and registered what it said um how many people then made the decision to purchase if they have not done so already you know where are they in that whole journey from uh, not knowing who you are as a brand to making that buyer's decision etc that was very hard to track 
And nowadays, it's very easy to track. We can literally see the metrics. We can see how many people viewed the ads, how many people went from the ads to the website. What is that conversion rate? What is the outbound click-through rates of people that have gone from uh, you know, social media, from Facebook, from Google, onto the website? And then from there, how many people viewed content that was on the website? How many people added to cart? How many people initiated the checkout? Even how many people added their payment info and how many people made the purchase? And then what the whole return was on your ad spend and what the return is on investment. You can see all of those metrics. And then within those metrics, you can also see what type of audience done that. So those people that went through that flow from uh, advertisement to purchase, what kind of person was that? What gender do they have? Um, What age are they? What interests do they have? It's really interesting to um, actually delve into like the the metrics and to see what type of person is that? What are their, you know, what's their income bracket? You know, what, um, where do they fall in like the percentiles of, uh, you know, basically income earners or whatever you call it. And also, what all their interests they have, etc. You know, what other things might they be interested in, and so on and so forth. And I think going forward, it we have the technology and the know-how to make that more specific. So, for example, with Google, and also a reason why I'm a big fan of Facebook advertisements is um, like the, with Google, sixty percent is still um, classed as uh, gender unknown now just forget all the sort of the the other types of genders etc you know i do not want to get into that in any way shape or form but when you set up google ads you can choose between male female or unknown and unknown still counts for 60 percent of the entire sort of google population or google audience and with facebook that is much more specific so if you target, um, for example, females on Google, then 60% of the audience on Google, like I said, is still unknown. Whereas with Facebook, if you target females, it's, I think it's 99 to 100% certain that um, you will just target, fem- target all the females that you want to target, basically. And uh, like I said, I'm trying to be careful with the way I say all of this because I understand you know, everything that is going on with the whole like, gender uh, situation but I hope that sort of makes sense so with Facebook you can target much more specific and they have much more data on us which is also scary in a way you know I understand people's uh, predicament with all of this and the data and privacy etc and I do think going forward in terms of privacy that could be the big thing the big decider how specific can we go how far can we go in terms of targeting my opinion on targeting etc i would rather see advertisements that i am interested in than advertisements that are not relevant to me in any way shape or form there is actually a link uh, where you can see what information uh, facebook has on you which emails uh, email lists you're subscribed to what audience you're subscribed to etc i will link that in the description box down below or i will leave it as a first comment um it depends basically how the content team uh, sort this out but like i said you know there is a way to see what Facebook knows about you. And in my opinion, I'm, I'm completely fine with that. Why? Because like I said, I would rather see advertisements about digital marketing services, about uh, email marketing services, etc. Then I don't know, my little pony advertisements that I'm just not interested in. And I understand that a lot of people do not think that way. They, they would, they think that they're going to be influenced by advertisements, which in a way is true. You know, there are a lot of uh, items that I have purchased as a result of an advertisement, I recently purchased two books that I seen as an ad first. I did not know the author. I did not know about the book. I did not know about the content in the book until I saw the advertisement. I saw the reviews. I got retargeted because I went onto the website and I made the decision to make that purchase. But at the end of the day, I was I was interested in the topic of that book prior to buying the book. It wasn't that like, like I said, it wasn't a book about, about ponies that uh, because I saw the advertisements, I all of a sudden developed this interest in ponies. You know, it was a book about sales and I already had that intrinsic um, motivation to absorb uh, content of that topic. So like I said, I'm, I'm completely fine with the internet knowing um, data about me. But like I said, I understand that people find this quite scary and like i said i think that will be the decider how far can we go you know will gdpr sort of rear its head and and 
put a stop to all of this or will Facebook just constantly learn about us, about our behavior on and offline and um, and the way I, the reason why I say offline is because I do believe that Facebook track a lot of metrics that we do not know about. Um, topic for another day, but like I said, I do I do believe that Facebook know a lot more about us than we than we understand and know and see online. But if we let Facebook do its thing, then I think it's going to be a, a industry or business model for a very very long time because like i said the tracking is just getting more and more specific and it will be more and more easier for advertisers like you and i to help businesses grow and yes you know then obviously you have the uh influx of ai artificial intelligence you know will we become obsolete etc but in my opinion you will always need that human touch like that human element with uh, when it comes to advertisements why because you are targeting another human being so you need that emotional connection with that human being for you know in order to make the advertisement advertisement relevant i think it's going to be extremely hard for a robot i'm not saying impossible you know they are getting better at it but i think it will be harder for a robot to really touch up on those pain points um, than it will for a human being because as a human being you can study that cost customer avatar and know what it's like to feel a certain way and that's just very hard to replicate um, for a robot or for artificial intelligence but like I said you know they are getting smarter and smarter but what I think I think the artificial intelligence is basically like the targeting and the business manager but you'll need that human touch to set everything up so artificial intelligence will basically allow you to target very specifically but it takes a human to set up the advertisements so for example um cbo is sort of artificial intelligence you know for example now um the ad budget has moved to a campaign level so what you can say to facebook is okay i'm going to run this one campaign i want to run into 10 different audiences and i want you facebook to decide which audience gets the majority of the budget and which advertisements in the form of dynamic creative ads which um you know image basically or video uh, gets the most views and performs best and the one that performs best gets the majority of the budget that is all done by ai but it's you, the human being, the business owner, the, the biz, you know, the, the digital marketer, to switch on the ad, to make changes based on the decisions of the AI. So that's basically my thoughts on that. And again, like I said, it's this is all subjective. This is all my opinion. Love to know your thoughts on it. If you do not agree with me, then just let me know. You know, I'm always interested in hearing other uh, sides of the story. But in terms of social media marketing at its core as a business to business service based um phenomena i think um it's going to get more and more common i think like when i started social media marketing back in the day 2017 the good old days um i had to convince business owners that digital marketing was a thing it was relevant that you that you could literally target your target audience with social media and now they understand that, uh, but now it's more a case of me convincing them that I am the right person for the job. Why? Because it's becoming more common. You know, the the market has um, grown to a point where uh, Facebook ads is no longer a weird type of, um, like I said, a weird type of marketing that is untested and it hasn't withstood the test of time just yet. Because now it has. You know, now it actually is. Um, it's almost like a household thing now you know facebook ads is is, the, is very common and a lot of people a lot of businesses already have that sort of social media strategy set in place however with the rise of social media marketing and social media in general also brings the other side of the spectrum which is online education online courses etc and i've touched upon this uh, a few times on this channel i am planning on stopping it because it's sort of a negative um, spin on everything but there are a lot of people that are also um, offering coaching services and online programs that teach other people on how to run an own run your own agency and that is the reason why i got started you know my very first course that i purchased was ty lopez's social media marketing agency course the first uh, the first version not the second one and that is how I got started. So yes, it's great in a way, but because there are so many people seeing the potential behind um, 
online education and info products because the great thing about info products is you can create it and then promote it and you, you spend it's front heavy so you spend the time on the front end building the course and then you promote it and then every single sale that you make is almost like passive because you've already created the course you do not need to create a new course for every sale you make and that is obviously very appealing to a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs because we are in this sort of short-term gratification type of um you know situation where we all want to earn money as quickly as possible we all whether we like it or not compare ourselves to other people online and we do not see everything that goes on behind the scenes we only see the highlights and because of that we think that we should also get rich quick we should also live this lifestyle you know if you look at if you compare yourself to people on the internet by the age of 25 you should already have your first million dollar business you should already have flown a private jet you should have already have traveled the world you should have already have gotten married having kids and you know purchase your first five properties etc and it's very hard to not compare yourself with that but like i said there are a lot of people that are falling for the idea that yes it is a get rich quick scheme and there are also a lot of people that are um, using that to their advantage knowing that it's actually easier to probably promote a course than there is to actually do the business you know actually fulfill the business model by offering your services to uh, other online business and offering facebook ads um, to online web shops local lead generation clients etc so with that there are a lot of people trying out the business model believing that it is an easy thing to do believing that you do not need to be an expert at the service that you are offering and that is obviously leaving it bad again with the after 15 minutes my camera stops recording but um basically what i was saying is that is leaving a bad taste in the mouths of these clients so now like i said rather than convince them that they need facebook ads that they need social media marketing i need to convince them that I am better than all of these other sort of agencies, uh, short-lived agencies that thought they just could quickly do a job for them. Um, Cause I think seven out of 10 businesses that I speak to have been burned before by other agencies. And when I say agencies, I'm more talking about like short-lived agencies, people that have seen the business model, uh, saw it as a shiny object, purchased a quick course, and then thought, okay, you know, I'll try and get my first clients. I'll use their scripts, etc. I'll try and get the clients. And then you've got the clients. You've got no idea what to do. Um, they, the client basically leaves after like 90 days because more often than not, they'll offer some kind of 90-day accelerator program. Um, from there, um, the client will leave and then will basically have their first experience with Facebook advertisements um, as a negative. And then the next agency that comes around, um, that could potentially actually take them to the next level um, has then got to spend time convincing the business owner that um, you know Facebook ads isn't just some some like fugazi you know facade um, it actually is a legitimate way of growing one's business but that the agency owner previous to that prior to that um, just didn't do a good job and the reason for all of this um, is it's twofold like I said it is the influx of uh, social media that is portraying this get rich quick lifestyle um in the netherlands we call it the left lane lifestyle um which literally translates to linkerban if you're from the netherlands you'll know what that means basically um the left lane on a motorway is the fast lane um in the netherlands because we drive on the right side um and that phenomena of like basically the, the left lane you know doing everything quickly has just become a common thing we all want it as quickly as possible and because of that and because of people just creating courses rather than promoting the business model and the content that they are creating is often regurgitated from other people so they've gotten their hands on a course or they might have purchased the course themselves copy what is in that course and then you're basically just selling secondhand content um, like for example this i'm not going to name any names but there was this one guy that i recognize his name because um i've just seen him in and around like the industry for two two three years or something like that now and he's recently brought out a course on the upwork business model and i'm like like bro like that was three years ago that that was a thing 
like the Upwork business model, it still works. Like there's nothing wrong with the with using Upwork to get social media clients, but promoting that as this new thing, this new model, the new way of social media, it's not the case. And like I said, I I haven't purchased the course, obviously, but chances are that that is just regurgitated or copied from you know people that have actually used and leveraged the Upwork business model to their advantage. And um, you know. Basically, my old business partner Bradley Riley. He is he's the one with the Upwork, um, you know, the Upwork business model, the Upwork course, and everyone else that has come after that and has promoted like the Upwork business model as the next thing. More often than not, they have come from Bradley directly and have just copied his course. Um, but like I said, you know, that is just happening over and over again. And this guy is now promoting the course as this new thing, but the content that he's promoting, the business model is three years old. Like Upwork is crowded. It is getting more and more crowded and it is harder and harder to get onto the platform. Uh, by the way, quick side note, if those of you that are actually interested in the Upwork business model, rather than buying the course, I've literally got a free beginner's course in my Facebook group that literally just tells you exactly how to get onto the platform, how to apply for jobs, etc. So that will all be linked in the description box down below. Um, but like I said, you know, it is harder to get onto the platform. It is hard to apply for jobs on Upwork and there are easier ways of getting clients rather than these freelancer websites. Like I said, it's not, I'm not saying that it's not the best way or it's not an effective way because it is low hanging fruit at the end of the day. These people are actively seeking social media marketers to do the job for them, but it's no longer that you post a, or you basically send a proposal and you are the first person that gets a reply, etc. You know, it is getting more and more difficult and people are getting dis disheartened by that. But the content is old, you know, the business model is old. It's, it's already been a few years since that sort of became a thing. And that is what you're seeing more and more nowadays. Like more courses are just copying other courses and people are purchasing it thinking that they're going to get rich quick, thinking that they're going to start a six figure business uh, within like seven days or whatever. And they might actually get a get a client, the client gets burned, and then the agencies that are actually tried and true, you know, people that have actually got an agency uh, for a while will then need to spend the next month trying to convince the business owner that it's not actually the the platform, it's not Facebook ads, it's because, you know, the, the agency prior to that wasn't actually um, an expert. He was basically just copying what he saw in a course that was outdated. So, uh, like I said, this whole video, um, I've started quite positive and I've sort of ended on a negative day. Um, like I said, there, it is difficult to sort of give my opinion on this, why? Because I do have my own coaching program. So I feel sort of like a hypocrite when, when explaining all of this. But one thing that I do want to touch upon is that um, with all of these courses, what I do try and focus on rather than just giving the content and the strategies is focusing on the person. Because I do really think that the person you become or like the things you do on a daily basis your mindset, your habits, etc. If you can focus on molding a person's habits and routines, it's much, much easier to set that person up for success than it is to say, okay, just use this script and you know be on your way. And uh, I've noticed that a lot of the sort of the big boys within the industry that are genuinely you know bringing out good content, they are slowly moving towards the the basically a coaching type hybrid of a course where they do offer coaching on the side they will offer um a coach within the community or a coach within the group why because they have also seen that yes that is something that you need you, you can't just give someone a course a program set it and forget it and say you know be on your way and like i said that is also the reason why towards the end of last year i switched my business model from a done for you course to also group coaching so with my program you actually get coaching as well, weekly coaching. Every Sunday, um, we go live on Zoom. I answer all of your questions. It's not like one of them where everyone's muted. I tell my story and then go offline. Like it's very interactive. So if you if you are in the coaching group, you know you will literally uh, be able to talk, ask questions. I will see you. You will see me. It's almost like you know we'll be friends at the end of the day because I'll know stuff about you and you'll know stuff about me, etc. Um, and that is a very important aspect of my program because it's, like I said, it's hard to just give someone a program and say, just do this because there's so much more that goes into it. You know, you need, like I said, you need to focus on where a person is at and where they want to go. Um, and there is, it's hard to get a done for you course to do all of that. 
Um, and in my opinion, you know, the coaching and the additional guidance is something of the future um, when it comes to education and info products. But uh, like I said, the whole point of this video is SMA. So to wrap all of this up, in my opinion, provided that we are allowed to continue with data gathering, GDPR, etc., um, I think social media marketing as a service-based business is here to stay. It will withstand the test of time. Um, not necessarily through Facebook. I do think that the big boys will slowly change. Um, you know, we've already noticed now that there are a few more platforms um, available to advertise on. You know, first you only had Google, then you had Facebook. Um, now you've got TikTok. You know, in between that we've had Snapchat ad, Bing ads, etc., Quora ads. You know, you name it. Um, I think there'll be more and more, and I think over time. You know, um, someone else will take over. You know, we've noticed that now. Um, you know, Facebook is quite a mature platform. Um, not not in terms of people on the platform, but in terms of how it's developed over time. And usually, when it gets to this point, someone else will take over. So when you look at, for example, ten years back, Facebook was still in its infancy in terms of advertisements. Um, it wasn't as specific as it is now. Now, obviously, it is one of the big boys uh, with Google. And it's, in my opinion, it's only a matter of time before something else comes along that is more exciting and that offers a unique um, aspect to advertising. And it's up to us as marketers to basically make that switch or to know when to jump ship. So uh, stay flexible. SRMA will be here to stay, in my opinion. The platforms that we offer, so Facebook advertisements, might not be in 10 years' time, but by then there will already be a new platform that is something that you can offer as a service and it's just up to us to basically make that switch so that is it for me for today slightly longer than i wanted it to be because like i said um there are a few things that i just wanted to touch upon with this video but like this video if you got some out of it please leave a comment down below with your thoughts and your opinion on all of this subscribe to the channel for more and i'll see you all in the next video